Hi there. You've asked me about religion. Why don't I ever talk about religion? Is religion necessary? Does it help? Is it harmful? What about comparing different religions to each other and which one should we choose? Or should we choose any? Or should we stick with science or atheism? Well, as a philosopher, I take the view that religion is extremely important to society and always has been and always will be, no matter what some people say. I also think that just as you try to replace religion with something else, that something else that you put in its place becomes like a religion and you start to preach at people exactly in the same way in which religious people might do. So we're not speaking about religion per se, we're speaking about ideology. We're speaking about what it is a person believes about the world, about life, what they believe life is about and how it works. It's about a system of operation, a way, a modus operandi, a way of going about in the world and in your life. You need to have some kind of map for this. And so you have many choices. Religions provide you with given maps and given books that indicate to you how you should live and how you should worship. I personally greatly respect all these religions. I think they have a lot more in common than they have indifference. And that the people who take them seriously and who devote themselves to their religion should be respected and very often find great strength from that religion and find a path in life that helps them stay on the straight and narrow and have a sense of purpose about their life. The problem with having a worldview that is secular or that is non-religious is that it's much, much harder and much more demanding and that you need to have the patience to really find things out for yourself or follow again the instructions of dominant scientists who tell you that this or that is the truth about life when actually you only know a tiny little bit about one particular science. Philosophers have very often opted out of giving any kind of guidance because their job is to investigate things, which is by the way also what scientists should be doing rather than preaching at us. So philosophers task is to observe different ways of making sense of the world and different ways of finding meaning in life and to give people an overview of the options available. I strongly believe that every person should be entitled to make their own choices about what is meaningful to them and that human beings in general need to have a strong view of what is meaningful in order to live a good and productive and meaningful life. So that is where I think that for a large majority of people Religion is by far the best option still now. For a small proportion, it is sufficient for them to just follow the rules of science, i.e. to stick with what is visible and what we actually know, which is a tiny fraction of all that we sense life is about. But if that is sufficient to people and they can reduce their lives to that fraction of knowledge, and they can live their lives by that small aspect of life, that's fine too. At least, you know, they're seeking a certain kind of truth. They're seeking to set their life 
on a path of knowledge rather than of belief. So I respect that greatly, but it would never be enough for me personally, because I am aware of how little the scientific approach touches on the things that really deeply matter to me. They, you know, science has only made very small strides in the field of human relationships, uh, has very little sense about the arts, has no sense of aesthetics, the beautiful, cannot provide us with a theory of ethics, how to live our lives, of morality, um, what, what is the case um, and how we should be. Um, science just cannot deal with those kinds of things, but it is a very important instrument to help us gain more and more of the facts about the world. And to my mind, therefore, philosophy is the only answer for me personally, because religion is not based in facts. It is always based in the facts that were available at the particular time when that religion was created. Religions are human endeavors to try and capture something of the awe and beauty and greatness and infinity and um, eternity of life in the universe, in the cosmos. All religions look at the same issues, the same things. They all try to give us a connection to what it is that matters, to the powers that are greater than those of human beings, even greater than the powers of nature, in fact. They aim for a metaphysical view of the world that goes beyond the minutia of human existence on a daily basis and that is why they are good because they help us have that view from above that sets us in new directions that clears our minds and that makes us strive for greater things than just material objectives that's the problem about science it makes people very materialistic and very short-sighted and it also makes them rather presumptuous as they begin to believe that their little god of factual knowledge is actually a greater god than the gods in religion, which is blatantly nonsense. So the problem with the gods of the religions, though, is that people do the same thing there. They end up believing that their God is the only God and that other people from other religious views who are equally devoted and equally holy and equally dedicated to the good and the true in the world are in the wrong. So you get this absurd situation where people just assume that because they think their religion is given by a God, that puts them in the truth and the others in the wrong. This can't be right. Religions need to get some humility. They need to accept that they are no more true than other religions and that religion has this function of connecting. That's what religion means, reconnecting, of connecting us to the things that really matter, to transcendental things, to metaphysical things, to the things that give meaning to life and that give us a sense of how best to live that life in a most sacred way, in a way that puts first the things that were there before we were here and that will still be there after we are gone. So in that sense, religion is great as long as it can start to get on with other religions and perhaps in an ideal world where religions could start to learn from each other and put together an entire understanding of how different human beings in different cultures have tried to do this job of worshipping, of allowing ourselves to be inspired allowing ourselves to remind to be reminded of the things that are greater than us 
more important than us as individual humans and that allow us to go forward also in togetherness with each other because each religion also has that function of bringing human beings together with that same objective of worshipping something that is beyond them. Now those forces of putting us back in the perspective of all that is and linking us together with all of us that are together are very important functions. And so if we can have a kind of meta-religion that uses all the good bits from the different world religions and that pulls us together in the spirit of science in an open-minded way, in an open-hearted way, in a warm-hearted way rather than in a suspicious way where we want to prove each other wrong or we want to establish our own superiority then we might stand the chance of coming to live human lives in a much more together way and in a much more fulfilling way because instead of having to fight religion and put ourselves away from it we can actually reap its benefits. So personally I can take a lot of inspiration and a lot of um, understanding from studying each of the religions in a humble and um, open way where I inform myself of what people have genuinely thought were the best way of living. This shouldn't be dismissed so easily. Nobody should feel in a position to rubbish somebody else's religion or to rubbish religion as an institution. It's a very naive thing to do and it's just a bid for more power and it's a destructive thing to do because if you look at the function of world religions across the world you will see it still brings a lot of people a lot of calm and a lot of importance and softness and hope in their lives. Believing in something is necessary. At the very least we believe that the world will still be there tomorrow and that life will go on after we are gone and that life has a meaning that we may not know about, but that it's worth it. At the very least, we have to have faith in that. When I work with people who have lost that faith in themselves, in other people, in mankind, in life itself, even in the earth or in nature, then I know I've got a deep problem and we have to start from scratch to build up some ground under their feet and of course the faith we have in the good things that exist in the world have to be extended into having faith into our own ability to build more good things to build good meanings and good societal structures that will actually facilitate us all and that will help us move forward evolve our consciousness to a deeper, stronger sense of meaning than we've ever had before, rather than to reduce ourselves to the small bit of knowledge we have acquired, or reduce ourselves to the separate individual religions and try to make any one of those belief systems dominate. What we need is a philosophical clarity that allows us to draw on all the goodness of science, all the knowledge that we have acquired across the board, interdisciplinary knowledge, and to draw on all the belief systems people have come up with and take from that, distill the deep meanings and the good things from that and create 
a sensible, meaningful direction for mankind. I hope so very much that many people will see the light about that and will work together towards the creation of that kind of deeper, broader, more together synergy of a search for good ways to live, good ways to worship the greater forces than us and benefit from that sense of living surrounded by great silent deep meaning that we are here with our small minds and our small capacity for letting the light in and having consciousness of things to make more of that and to grow in exploring that more and more patiently together in a loving way and with an open mind and an open heart. Goodbye.